So learning data science is actually really hard, but it's even harder if you don't have a framework. Without a framework, it's much harder to fit it in alongside other commitments, like having a full-time job or being a parent. That's why I want to share a framework for going from complete beginner to data science pro as fast as possible. And before we start, I want to say thank you to Coursera for sponsoring this video, more on that later. So this framework involves six levels of competence and your job is to progress through those steps. And I have some suggested exercises and materials for each of these steps, which I'll mention in the video and I'll also share in the description. So the six stages are the basics of programming, setting up the data science environment, knowing how to build a simple model, knowing how to do a simple data science pipeline, adapting that data science pipeline to more complex cases, and finally going pro, which is the sixth stage where you develop your own style and expertise as a data scientist. So knowing where you are and therefore what you should do next is a really helpful framework to guide what you should do as the next step. I'd love to know where you are at the moment, so drop a comment below and let me know which of the six levels you think you're at. So I think the first thing that you should do if you haven't already is learn the basic programming principles. Now, I actually used to recommend that people when they were trying to learn data science, start by understanding some of the theory, understanding some of the popular machine learning algorithms, but I've really changed my mind on this. And I think the reason for that is because we've seen a bit of a trend in the last few years towards models where you can actually just call them using API calls such as ChatGPT, or you can just import a library and actually a lot of the core functionality is abstracted away. So you can get away a fair extent without really understanding how the algorithms are working as long as you know how to call them using code. So the core principles are things like data types, variables, functions, importing libraries. These are all absolute bread and butter things that you'll need to do if you want to be able to do data science and incorporate models that already exist. And you will also need to then go beyond that, but learning these basics is really the, the best starting point for that. In terms of what language to learn, I would say just go with Python. If you're interested in data science, you really can't go wrong with Python. It's used by all of the main companies. Um, a lot of the frameworks are built around it and it's just a super versatile language. And also a lot of the principles that apply to Python will also be true in other languages. So if you, if you later need to learn JavaScript, actually most of the stuff you learn in Python will also be able to, uh, you'll be able to use it in, in JavaScript as well. You'll just have to learn how the syntax varies a little bit. And this is something I often see people getting a bit heads up of like, okay, I'm just learning to program, what language should I start in? I would say if you're thinking about the data science direction, just learn Python, trust me. So I have a bunch of resource recommendations. I'll leave links in the description as well. And I would basically say like in this day and age, you absolutely do not need to be paying for resources. Um, there's great videos on YouTube. So for example, Free Code Camp, uh, they have great YouTube videos that are all free and will take you through everything you need to know about Python. There's also a great course from Harvard called CS50. Uh, it's like an open, freely available course as well. Um, I did that maybe uh, four or five years ago. Uh, it was super helpful. Um, so either of those I would say are fantastic. And I'll leave a couple of other links in the description as well. So as well as watching those videos, taking those courses, I would also recommend doing some practical exercises. And I'll leave a link that I've written a bunch of different practical exercises that test some of these core um, Python programming principles. And I'm also going to be releasing a video in the next month or so, which goes through all of the principles in Python as well. So hit subscribe if you want to see when that video gets released. So the next step is being able to manage the data science environment. And what do I mean by that? I mean setting up a place either on your computer or using some other computer that you're connected to where you can load the libraries you need to do to do data science. You can load in the data that you need to use. You know how to manage any specific packages. So for example, there's packages like NumPy and Pandas and Scikit-learn, but there's also a few more exotic packages that you might need to use depending on your use case. And in order to do data science, you want to be able to manage that environment where you can load in all of that material, um, load in all of that code, load in that data, and work with it. And this might sound relatively basic, but it can actually be a bit fiddly because for example, you might need to pick the package manager that you want to use. You can either use pip or conda or two of the main ways in which people control their environment, control the packages that they're installing. And I would definitely recommend as soon as you've got the basics of programming, then go on to understand, okay, how do I manage my environment? How do I load in the packages that I need? How do I load in the data? How do I do that maybe on my local computer with things like Jupyter Notebook? How can I do that maybe on Google Colab or some kind of resource where you can access computers that will then be able to load in your data, execute your code and produce your output. And if you're not sure where to start, I've written an exercise that walks you through this process. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. So the next stage is actually being able to just train a simple model. And here I'm merely referring to being able to load data, load a model, train that model on the data and make that model make a prediction. So right now I'm not thinking about how do you really figure out how to clean this data properly? How do you figure out which kind of algorithm to use? How do you interpret the results? It's purely just the ability to actually fit that model and use it to make predictions. So what I first recommend is find some open source data sets. You can find some on Kaggle, you can find some on various other websites. And I actually have a link where I've brought together loads of different open source data sets that I know of that are all good quality. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to use that. 
and then just train a simple model to do a relatively simple task. So I would recommend starting with a classification task and you can import scikit-learn and use one of their classification algorithms. I'll leave a link in the description with some documentation around that and what sort of algorithms you might be able to use. So here I would just focus on getting it to work. Don't worry about understanding the algorithms. I will get onto that into the next stage. Um, but as long as it works, we're ready to move on. So now for the fun stuff. Stage four is being able to actually do a data science pipeline. Well, what do I mean by a data science pipeline? Um, it's roughly like five or six steps, depending on the framework that we're using, going from identifying data you want and getting that data all the way up to having a model, analyzing it and deploying it in some kind of real world environment. So at this stage, we want to be able to do each of these five or six different steps. I've written more about the data science pipeline elsewhere and I'll leave a link in the description, but broadly it's about identifying the data getting it, cleaning that data. So cleaning it is removing outliers, making it normalized and kind of standardized across a certain range because that's important for certain algorithms. And um, maybe changing the different data types of some of the variables so that it's ready for a machine learning model. As I said, there's more information on that in this link that I'll share. And then once you have that, is then a case of actually fitting the model with it. There's also a step where you might want to pick what sort of features are you going to use in your model. So for example, maybe you have 100 different variables and you're trying to predict how long somebody's gonna stay in hospital. There's some variables that might be more interesting and some that are less interesting. And so you can remove some of those off the bat or you might want to use an algorithm that's going to select the variables that are of interest. Then you actually fit the model itself. You then use that model, you do testing, you look at the performance, and depending on the type of task, there's different performance metrics you can use. I'll leave a link up here or here about a video I made on performance metrics. Now, if you want to practice this, I have a bunch of exercises that you can work through. They're all self-explained Jupyter notebooks that you can go through and test out your ability to do different types of data science. So there's some that are classification tasks, some that are regression tasks, some that use deep learning, neural networks. Um, there's really a whole mix of there. So depending on what your kind of level of competence is at the moment, feel free to check out all those resources and you'll be able to find an exercise that's at your level. So there's some theory that I would recommend learning at this stage. This is some of the core concepts like underfitting and overfitting, um, the types of tasks, so classification versus regression, supervised versus unsupervised learning. I'd recommend learning the main algorithms for these different tasks as well. And I have a video series which explains these key concepts through a healthcare lens. So I'll leave a link up here and in the description. There are some good online programs that are also helpful at this stage. And one of these is the Google Data Analytics Certificate, which is available via Coursera, who are sponsoring this video. So the nice thing about doing a more substantial program like the Google Data Analytics Certificate is that it actually gives you more of this structure as well. And you'll see that it actually goes quite hand in hand with the structure that I'm outlining in this video as you work through that program and through those exercises. So this program covers a lot of the things you would want to know about the data science pipeline, such as cleaning the data, visualizing it, and doing different types of analysis. In total, there are eight courses within the program. It's taught by Google employees. And with under 10 hours a week, you'll be able to complete it within around six months. You don't need any prior experience to do this kind of course. You can do it at your own speed. And at the end, you get a certificate that you can put on your LinkedIn and you can show to potential employers. So now we're at stage five, which is where we start to adapt the data science pipeline to different problems and answer our own questions. So in real life, doing data science can really vary quite a lot. There's different things that you might need to analyze and sometimes you don't know exactly how you should be doing that. Maybe, for example, you might be working with a different kind of data that you've never worked with before. Um, you might be trying to create some kind of prediction model that doesn't have a metric um, that fits into the normal framework of, of these performance metrics. And in these cases, you need to be able to figure it out. And that ultimately comes with experience. It comes with knowing where to search online, how to get the answer to these questions, um, how to be thinking about the kind of current mental framework you have around data science, how to then adapt that to this new situation. And ultimately the way to get to this point is just lots and lots of practice and ideally practice in a setting where you have somebody giving you some kind of feedback, um, maybe a supervisor or somebody who's more experienced with you, just giving you pointers on how you could do things. I would say in total, you probably want to do somewhere between three and 10 projects that are substantial projects lasting a month or more before you kind of really get to this point where you're confident enough to do things as a standalone data scientist. I would say in my case, I felt, yeah, probably maybe two or so years into my journey as a data scientist, two or three years, when I had a couple of big projects under my belt, I'd maybe done a few that were three months plus, a couple of longer ones like six months, where I'd really been working on a problem, thinking about it a lot, reporting to some kind of supervisor, maybe every week, every couple of weeks, and getting that direct feedback. That over time I kind of accumulated and started to get a general feeling for, okay, 
when I see some kind of new problem, how might I solve this? And generally expand the, the area of experience that I have. Because I think ultimately a lot of this comes down to pattern recognition. So when you are faced with a new data science problem, you want to figure out, okay, how do I get this data into the right format? How do I um, set up my model such that I'm doing the right kind of prediction that I would want to in this case? And how am I then gonna evaluate that? How would I then deploy that and monitor that over time? In terms of what these projects might be, um, it's a little bit harder to recommend something because for the exercises that I have that I would recommend for stage four, these are all relatively small self-contained exercises that you could do in an afternoon or in a day if you wanted to. Um, but here really what I'm talking about now is doing projects that are lasting one month or more. And so potential sources of that, I mean, you could look at Kaggle. Sometimes they have different competitions which you could enter, you could even find a team and work together on some kind of problem, try and get the best performance. You also might be able to get a role in a company. And actually this is maybe the point at which you would be thinking, if you've done these first four stages and if you're not yet working in some kind of data science role, you might now start thinking, okay, is there a data science role I could get involved with? Is there maybe a part-time project that I could get involved with? Um, really depending on what your situation is and, and what your interests are. But here really it's just about getting those under your belt and, and getting more and more project experience. And I think once you start to feel more confident that you're at this level of competence, this is also the point at which you could potentially start charging for your services as a freelancer. In my case, I've been working full-time as a freelance data scientist for the last six months or so. And I was only really able to do that because I felt now that I have the confidence in my ability to operate by myself because of this experience and time that I spent under others with many, many years of experience who were helping me out. And if you are at this level and you're interested in trying to monetize those data science skills and do some freelance work, then I've also written a guide about that. So I'll leave a link in the description below. And then we have the final stage, which is stage six, the data science pro, the boss level, whatever it is you wanna call it. And yeah, basically here is, is what I would just say is uh, when you, pretty good you know you've you've worked on loads of projects you're very confident you have your own style of doing data science um, you've optimized your data science workflow you know a lot of different tools that you can use to really excel and I just kind of kept this in here as a level of competence that we can all aspire to in my case I'm not sure if I'm quite a level six yet maybe I'm 5.5 I mean I'm confident in myself but I probably wouldn't call myself a data science pro so yeah I think really just to get to this level it's a case of doing more and more projects over time um, there's no uh, secret source um, if you spend enough time on it and you're really interested in like optimizing and, and getting that peak performance then that's what you would need to do to get to this stage six I know a few people who are at this level so people who are for example winning competitions on Kaggle or working at like some of the top companies applying data science then um, yeah you will be at this kind of data science pro and I guess you can then call yourself a pro if you want to so those are the six stages. And just before we wrap up, I actually want to touch a little bit on one of the aspects of this, which is we're trying to learn data science. We're doing other things. Maybe we have a job, maybe we have kids, maybe we're busy with something else. So how do you actually meaningfully find time to, to, to make this kind of change, to build these skills and potentially transition a career into that space? And the first thing I would say on this is it's helpful to be specific about your aims. So really, what is it exactly you want to achieve? Is it that you are not happy with your job, you want to completely change and become a data scientist full time, and you're trying to find out a way to do that? If that's the case, fair enough. Like that, that's one approach. Or is it that you just want to add data science skills to your portfolio so that you can use them in your current career because maybe there's opportunities. Uh, when I was a doctor, for example, I was seeing that there were a lot of projects that involved data science and being somebody from a medical background who can also understand data science was helpful for me in that career path. And I'm hoping that this competence framework can also help with specifying your aims because maybe you want to set yourself the goal of getting to uh, competence stage four using this framework within six months or within one year. And then you can kind of see, okay, I've got to this point where I can do a data science pipeline. I'm confident of handling some of these variations then that means you can assess whether you've got to that competence level and I would also say this doesn't really have to be an all or nothing you don't have to decide right now that I'm gonna become a data scientist and work full-time in data science in one year's time there's an approach that I personally took and I think can be a helpful way to think about it which is around little bets so basically the idea is that you take these little bets and over time those little bets might evolve into big bets but you're not gonna start straight away by deciding I'm gonna become a data scientist I'm gonna quit my job and go and work in data science you would do something small 
like maybe a small project that gives you some insight into whether this is what you want to do, that gives you the opportunity to develop those skills and get you closer to that kind of career transition. And I think that's really the best way to think about it. In my case, what I did is I was working as a doctor, I was working full time and I just started learning some programming courses. I did those in the evenings. Then I did a project. So I found a startup that was that had some data and they wanted somebody to come and help with the data science. So I just used at that time relatively basic understanding I had of data science and machine learning. And I went to that company and I offered my services and then we ended up doing a project together. And then that project went well, I really enjoyed it. So then I went to the next thing and then yeah, I did a couple of different projects. I then did a master's degree. I then got a full time job and I really gradually transitioned into now working freelance as a data scientist, which I absolutely love. But it was really a case of slowly incrementally taking these small bets, which became big bets and then ended up with a career transition. And then the final thing I would just say is, is enjoy the ride. It doesn't have to be some big undertaking that's, that's super high stakes where if you don't make it or if your progress is not as fast as you want it to be, then you're going to get frustrated about it. Yes, there will be times where this is tricky and it can be frustrating, but overall you want to be doing it because you enjoy it. So if you never have moments of, of enjoyment, then this might not be the right path. And then you want to think about something else. Really, I think following the, the, the fun, the curiosity can be super powerful. Maybe there's some idea you have of an interesting piece of data analysis you could do on some data set from the internet. Just go ahead and do that and you'll learn a bunch from the process. You don't have to stick to any kind of linear path, any particular courses or recommendations, uh, even the recommendations that I've given in this video. Yeah, I did a project a couple of years back where I just wanted to make an algorithm that would recommend me YouTube videos and it was different to the YouTube algorithm. And so what I did there was I loaded up a load of YouTube videos, I found some metrics, I trained some fairly simple data science algorithms to rank my videos. It was super fun. I was kind of curious about it. I shared the experiences and I ended up meeting the, the head of the YouTube recommendation team because he read the article and people found it interesting. It was kind of a random project to be honest, but I'm, I'm happy I did it because it was fun and, and then people liked it. So yeah, if there's things that come to mind that are fun or interesting or curious to do, I would say follow those. You know, you could set a rigid schedule of I want to cover this amount of this course every week, blah, 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 blah. And, and that can be helpful for periods, but it can also just be helpful to come up with some project idea and then spend time on it. And you don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe you spend ages on it. Maybe you kind of really get invested in it, but it can be a useful way to just build those skills in a fun way. So that's it for the video. But before we leave, I would love for you to do one thing, which is think what sort of level are you at right now? What sort of level do you want to be at? What sort of time frame do you want to achieve that over? And then let me know in the comments below because I'll be super curious to hear. Check out the link for the program via Coursera in the description below as well. If you use my special link, you will get a seven day trial of that course. I've also written a blog version of this video which goes through these six steps in a little bit more detail than I did in the video. If you want to learn some more data science theory, you might want to check out my videos here or maybe here. Uh, and if you want to do some more practical exercises, then check out my videos and exercises either here or here as well.